Ah, behold, the glorious animated goof. What a strange cartoon creature. Is it a dog? A good father? Does it love a cow? The world may never know. But when one studies the goof in the environment of the theme park, you quickly uncover a rich history of how this wild character was translated into nothing more than cloth and plaster. This is the costumed evolution of Goofy in theme parks. <laughs> we did it, Kenny! We made a Goofy opening! Yes! But first, a word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. That's right, all of my amazing patrons. Just wanted to take a moment and thank all of you for all of your years of support, especially my patrons. All of that support has really helped grow this channel massively. If you wanna be a Patreon supporter, head on over to patreon.com slash DisneyDan and join the Laugh Pack. But even if you can't, just by being an awesome viewer, subscriber, watcher, commenter, all of your support is a constant joy to me and really helps helps this channel, you all are amazing. All right, guys, we're back. We're back into Goofy. Now look, I covered Goofy before. In fact, it's my shortest history. I don't even know how I made a five minute history, but it actually happened. But I really missed a lot when talking about Goofy. Not anything major in how his costume changed, but a lot of really fun and weird details. And we, we've just got to go back into Goofy and take a closer look at it. In fact, let's start in 1955 when Disneyland opened, but Goofy was not present. For those who don't know, Disneyland opened with costume characters that were pulled off of the ice from the touring Ice Capade shows. But where was Goofy in this cast of characters? Missing, because his costume wasn't made by the Ice Capades, it was made by another studio, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. See, in 1955, Goofy was super famous. All those animated shorts about how to do things, man, people were obsessed with them. In fact, they made a short about how successful Goofy was and how to succeed in Hollywood. It's really amazing. And Goofy was at the height of his popularity. So of course, on the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse in season three, we had a birthday party that featured one of the main characters doing the Goofy Shuffle. It's hilarious. They're all sitting at the table eating a birthday cake and he's like, hey, where's the Goofy mask? <laughs> that we've got laying around. <laughs> and the one kid's like, oh, I know. And he brings it out and boy, man, this was back in the day when Goofy had just like solid buck teeth and they are aggressive in this costume. But the super Goofy shuffle is easier to do when you haven't got a single thing to do. A few months after the park opened in 1955, Disneyland debuted a circus in the back of the park in the area that is now Mickey's Toontown. This circus was a combination of an existing trapeze act and all the stragglers left in the third season of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> that meant that Goofy now finally had a new home in the parks and he made appearances at that circus. There aren't a lot of photos of Goofy in the circus. This was back when people went to Disney World and went to the circus and then took pictures of animals instead of costume characters. They were really impressed about seeing an elephant. There wasn't a Discovery Channel, you know? So they weren't really snapping pictures of, you know, Goofy and Mickey. But this circus costume is the exact same mask from the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse show, just brought into the parks and given a proper Goofy wardrobe. It took a few years for the Disney parks to make their first original Goofy costume, and that was in the summer of 61, right? That summer of fun that introduced the big heads. Oh, the big heads. Oh, the big heads. We were doing lots of experiments with costume characters, trying to make them shorter for little kids to interact with. And you know what? One character that didn't need any of that nonsense? Goofy. He was nice and tall. We didn't need to make him any shorter than necessary. <laughs> So Goofy was able to tower over the kids and it was justified because he towered over Mickey and Minnie. There are a lot of differences between this costume and the one from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. This is really the new streamlined animated Goofy look. He has properly separated teeth, he has colorful hat, he has a beautifully colorful wardrobe, huge leather clown shoes. This is the Goofy that we see tripping and stumbling all over in the cartoons. Fun fact, Goofy has real leather shoes. They're not any of these like plastic ones that you see cast for Donald and Daisy, Mickey and Minnie. These are proper big old clown shoes made of leather and they're laced up on the actor's foot. Here's where the sculpted head 
makes major improvements over the original one from the clubhouse. You can see all the individual pieces broken out and layered on this sculpt one at a time. There was a lot of detail and energy that went into this. Goofy has a large jowl, a huge mouth, a big nose, large eyes, big defined features, and they were able to really execute that beautifully. This first Park Goofy laid an amazing foundation that almost directly led to the modern Goofy we have in the parks today. A few years later, in 1963, Goofy got a complete facelift. That is right, we gave Goofy all kinds of fun facial features. First, his fur is a little bit more of a thicker pile, which is great, lots more of definition there. And we brought the fur down further on his brow, giving him a strong widow's peak. And not to be outdone by his luscious new locks, he's also given beautiful eyelashes. Look at these lashes. They're gorgeous. They're phenomenal. It's like, is it, was he born with it? Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. They also replace Goofy's vest in a couple of costume tweaks with this new look. With a thinner profile, looks actually a little bit sleeker. And most notably, we get the defined Goofy hat, finally. Here it is. Now it starts in fabric, but it's got the nice little brim and it has the whole little fold on the top. It's the cute little Goofy hat, all nice and neat. The summer of 1969 brought Goofy a brand new head sculpt. Long gone now is the soft Goofy head. Now replaced with it is that hard plastic Goofy shell, just like all the costume characters have today. Now in this new Goofy head, they put in a lot of fun animation, specifically in his eyelids. Now Goofy's eyelids are essentially doll eyes. His lids can move up and down depending on how far the Goofy head is tilted. There's also a little bit of movement in the jaw. There are some photos where Goofy has a nice tight jaw and there are some where his jaw is practically unhinged. We also replaced Goofy's fabric hat with a new green plastic version. He's got a hard hat, it's happened. Now he's safe to wander into any kind of park construction. Gorge. One of Goofy's most popular looks was that spaceman suit in the 1975 grand opening of Space Mountain. Of course, he had another costume spaceman suit in the 60s that was awful, trying to sculpt that bubble around the chaos that is his head. I don't know what they were thinking when they made that spacesuit. And then what's even stranger is, in the 1975 version of the costume, why does Goofy's hat go through the space bubble? That, 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 that breaks the seal. His hat is fabric, it's not airtight. That doesn't make any sense. This version of Goofy was also used out in the lake in the 70s for a water skiing show. That's right, Goofy used to water ski in the lake outside of Magic Kingdom. And uh, well, look, there he is, there he is, he's water skiing. Now what's interesting about this is they pulled those articulated eyes out of this costume and replaced them with a plain white screen painted to look like an eye so that the water skier had more visibility. The next Goofy look came in 1978, where we really got the modern Goofy look established. This is the Goofy look we literally have till this day. Now here's the thing, up until this point, the Goofy costume journey has really presented itself as like a dude in a very fitted suit, kind of uh, wearing a Goofy head. <laughs> Remember that, uh, where he's doing the twist? That's just a dude doing the twist with a Goofy hat on. But the 1978 update sought to correct that with a few very simple changes to the core look. First, we added a touch of padding to the core of the costume to allow for a little peaky goofy belly. Then we gave him an oversized shirt rolling the cuffs and paired that with an oversized pair of pants with flared bell bottoms. This hides the look of the cast member inside the costume. All that extra baggy fabric that's now hanging off of the Goofy character really lends itself to the insanity that is Goofy and doesn't make you think about the human that's inside. This fresh modern look also gave Goofy his last refinement to his head sculpt. We played around with the size of his ears, the thickness of his whiskers, and how shiny his nose is. And this has really been the final Goofy head sculpt that we've had for uh, well over two, three decades. One of my absolute favorite Goofy moments is outside of the parks on ice. That's right, baby, we're talking about it. We're back on ice. In 1985, Goofy had his own Disney on Ice show. It was similar to the Goofy how-to shorts, but this one focused specifically on sports. Boy, Goofy did all kinds of stuff in this thing, like run, play tennis, play football, play baseball. 
Once the costume heads were modernized for most of the Fab Five, Disney on Ice has been using them consistently. These heads are, are the same heads you would see in the park, but the costumes worn underneath the fitted heads are made by the Disney on Ice people, made specifically for all kinds of ice skating stunts. <laughs> what is this finale? What is this? <laughs> what? What is this Goofy? The Golden Goof? What did you win, Goof? What did you do, Goofy? This is a participation award. In 1992, one of my favorite parades hit Walt Disney World for five months. You know it, baby. The world according to Goofy. It's the world according to Goofy. It's the Goofy way. It's the world according to Goofy. Looks like Goofy's here to say, oh, it's no mystery. It's just Goofy history. The world according to Goofy today. This parade, man, is just full of every kind of Goofy you could possibly imagine. But keep in mind that all of these Goofy looks still have the core Goofy sculpt underneath all of it. These are still the main Goofies that we see just dressed up and painted differently. Except for the beast that is Golf Ball Goofy. God save us from Golf Ball Goofy. Please, sweet baby Broadway Jesus, bring us redemption. <laughs> save us from the sin that was creating this monstrosity. This golfing monstrosity. And everyone's like, why is his hat a snake? Well, because he's hanging out with Cleopatra and that snake's about to go kill the woman and maybe Golf Ball Goofy, all the Egyptian goofs. It is seriously like something you would find from an episode of like The Simpsons at Itchy and Scratchy Land. It is bizarre. It is bizarre. In 2006, that castle show, you've all seen it. You've all been there for the fireworks. You're just wandering around Frontierland and the castle suddenly shooting fireworks off. You're like, ah, Mickey's out there again making friends. That show, of course, was where the articulated heads finally rolled in and Goofy was one of the Fab Five to get them. Man, I love an articulated Goofy. I really do. He is super, super cool. And you know what's coming soon? Sneaky, speaky Mickey secrets, all right? This has been the last kind of update to the sculpt of the Goofy head. You know, minor changes were made, of course, to make room for mechanics of the, the very complicated servo system that works this beautiful head. And to start, the cast members inside were the ones that controlled the articulation using triggers in both of their hands. But now it, of course, is all controlled by a grand computer. Some kind of Tron-like thing, I imagine, that lives inside the castle. Now we have continued to mess with Goofy, all right? Just because we didn't stop changing his head sculpt doesn't mean that we didn't stop messing with the poor thing. 2013, of course, brought the Star Wars celebrations to the park where we saw all of the Star Wars Fab Five, where Mickey and Minnie, uh, you know, a married couple decided to dress up like siblings who've kissed. I don't know. That's a Luke Mickey. That's a Luke Mickey. I don't know what you want me to say. I don't understand Goofy Vader. Why is Goofy wearing his underwear on outside of his pants? He has sexy leather Anakin pants on, and then he's wearing Goofy boxers on top. Well, Mickey boxers on top of it. There's a hidden Mickey for you. Yikes. And of course, my absolutely favorite Goofy of all time, the 2021 Christmas celebration at Disneyland. All of those Christmas Carol characters. Man, look, it's Marley Goofy. It's so spooky. I love that. I love this Marley Goofy. It is really, really cool looking. Man, it's uh, it's it's blue. It's haunting. It's really fun. Man, I can't wait till we get to meet characters again and take pictures with them and all that fun lighting. But uh, this Goofy is definitely my favorite. Now, Goofy has had tons and tons of costumed looks. He is wearing new outfits left and right everywhere you look. It's kind of amazing the fun things they can do with this oversized costume character compared to all those little short things that are running around the park. You know, those ducks and mice. And now that you have observed the goof in his natural theme park environment, you have a better understanding of why the goof is. Thank you, of course, for watching this wonderful episode of Distory. As always, you rock!